What's up guys, it's Cat Marquez. Thank you for joining me again on this uh, random, very late night upload video. <laughs> You're probably watching this in the future where it doesn't matter what time it is, but here's peace, here's love, here's life. I hope you guys are having a good day or a good now or whenever you're listening to this. All my ER fans will know that. Um, glad to have you guys back again. I'm just going to be spilling the thoughts that are coming from my mind on you. So that's what's going on in this video. Let's get into it. So I've been having this um, puzzling uh, quandary of thoughts meandering through my mind lately that uh, has reached in a culmination. I, I want to start making videos more spontaneously as I get the inspiration to do so. And it reminds me of a, uh, a writing prompt or, or more accurately, there was a story of a, a writer who he would say that he was pulled and, and like he was forced to write stories. He'd be awoke in the night to go and write stories. You know, he was compelled. That's how I feel about making certain videos. And I know I can't, I can't hold that energy. I can't, uh, you know, have it chomp the bit and restrain it. I have to let the energy flow. So I have to get on a video and make it because when you share energy, it almost spreads throughout the people you share it with and it grows in power even if they don't share it with anyone it's like when you disperse an idea between people it gives it life the idea i'm speaking about in particular is solipsism or solipsism however you want to uh, pronounce it uh, i mention this because it's the idea as i understand it i don't have the direct definition up here so if you're trying to merriam webster you can just google it yourself um but the idea of solipsism is that you're totally alone and that there is no one else real on earth. You're the only conscious sentient being. And there's no definitive way to prove that that isn't our reality right now. There's no way for you to prove to yourself that there are actually other people as sentient and cognizant experiencing reality the way you do out there in the world. There's just no way. Um, and to help illustrate this point, in a dream, you believe it's real, and you believe that all the characters are real in that dream, when in fact, you're the only sentient being in the dream world, if it's your dream and you're not sharing that space with anyone, which is usually the case. You're the only one there, and it is your mind, your subconscious mind, occupying every other person you come across, so they don't actually exist. They're not real. And in a way, solipsism carries that same connotation. It has the, the feeling of, I'm here, and I'm alone in this simulation. Now, this is a frightening thought because uh, I recently saw a video where uh, someone was talking. Oh, it wasn't a video. It was a, a Reddit post. I spend a lot of time on Reddit, and I, I Google everything. <laughs> so, so when I say I've done research, I've just gone to Reddit, and I've read articles and other stuff like that. Uh, forums. I spent a lot of time on forums. But there was a specific uh, forum post where a guy was talking about the different theories about reality. And he was saying that, you know, simulation theory is scary. Yes. But the scarier thing is if you're the only person in this simulation, the whole universe, you're the only sentient being in the simulation, that sense of loneliness is paralyzing. And what they use to kind of make sense of that is the idea that it's possible that everyone in this vicinity and by vicinity i'm meaning uh galaxy even in this immediate consciousness field if you want to sound as etheric as possible anyone in this area doesn't exist but you which would mean that there are other beings that exist like you're existing, but they exist light years away from you. And they are the only being in their simulation in that quadrant of the unexplored universe. And that increases the level of solitude and loneliness because loneliness doesn't really exist apart from 
Like, unless there is someone else that you could possibly be with, loneliness has no quality about it. If you're alone and there's no option to be with anyone else, you can't really call it loneliness because loneliness has to be in conjunction with something else. Like, you don't understand anything in reality unless it has a contrast. And this is another thing that's been bumbling around in my mind lately, is that everything in life has a contrast. And that's how we know what it is. You don't see the boundary lines between what is and what it isn't unless it has a contrast. When you look at a picture in black and white, all there are are contrasts of light and dark. And that's how reality is. So loneliness, in a sense, cannot be loneliness unless there is the option to, you know, prevent that loneliness. There have to be people that you could be with in order to let you know that you are in fact lonely. Otherwise, you would just exist. There would be, you know, there has to be one and the other. There has to be something for the scale to balance in order for life to make sense in a way. And in that, there is only one thing. I know that may sound confusing, but if one thing requires the other, then they are in fact in tandem, like the ventricles of the heart. You have to have the right and left. Like, you can't exist with one half of your heart. So you need the other half, so they are one. Hope I'm making that point clear. I wanted to make this video specifically because I think I have found a specific link in my mind, something that helps me, that I just discovered listening to a piece of music. I think there there is a way to bridge the gap between the concept that solipsism presents. Because at this current moment, like I said already, there's no way to really hammer down the idea that there are other sentient beings out there and that you aren't just in a simulation all by yourself. Uh, a, a single player game on campaign mode where everyone else is a non-playable character. There's no way to prove that difference. An easy test for that is just thinking there's no way to prove that the color blue that I see is a color blue that you see. I'm sure you guys have heard of that. But the fact that my perception is different than yours is already indicative of the fact that possibly no one else exists but me in this present moment consciousness. And that is very alarming. But music. It seems as though music presents this solution to the problem of infinite and abysmal loneliness. Music is like a telephone, it seems. And the artist that is making the music is putting you on the phone with their expression of reality. And that doesn't seem like it would be possible in a reality where you were the only being out there. Or perhaps it could. But in this instance, there comes a, a, a specific feeling with the experience of music. I, of course, there's a mental satisfaction when listening to music. The mind likes rhythm, like it likes mathematical correctness. But there's also a spiritual and energetic relief and satiation that the soul feels as well. Um, I was recently listening to an artist. Uh, I don't know if you all have heard of him or if it's even pertinent for me to mention this artist, but uh, Corbin. You can look him up on YouTube. Very strange. I listen to a lot of strange music. But I can identify with this artist's music, and I can only categorize it as agony and abysmal loneliness with a bit of nostalgia sprinkled on top. And that may sound sad and disappointing. And immediately, if I were to play this music in a crowd of people, they'd be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Why are you so sad? But that's not the case. It's just that the energetic representation of that music is very close to what people would define as sadness. That's just the energy signature of it. Um, in figuring this out, I said to myself, it's almost like these artists go to a place where they're writing the line of life and death. And when they get in the studio and they get on the mic and the music plays, they somehow tap into this etheric understanding 
and they allow themselves to teeter on life and death so that they can express to us what death feels like from a comfortable place. If this concept alarms you or surprises you in any way, consider what happens when we go to the movies and we sit in a movie theater. We're watching, in some cases, if you like thrillers like I do, we're watching a movie depicting something that's dangerous, thrilling, exciting. And during the course of that film, you'll experience a whole host of emotions. You'll go through the whole gambit of human emotion, if it's a good film. If it's a bad film, you'll probably just laugh or not like it. But if it's a good film, you'll be happy, sad, confused, uh, you'll be curious, you'll be angry, you know, you, you'll be jealous. You'll experience all of these things. And that's what a good piece of m music does to you. That's what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to, like an accordion, it's supposed to stretch your range of human experience. As opposed to just the finite band that we experience daily. And the fact that pieces of music have this... This accordion-like command over our emotional states indicates to me that we can't possibly be in a simulation where we are the only arbiters of that particular space. You know, uh, when you're watching a movie, there are moments, especially when your emotions are captivated, that you are engrossed by the film. You become the film. You become the characters. You almost symbiotically, parasitically connect yourself to the character in the scene. And when something jumps out at the character, it's jumping out at you. It's a concept that I've been tossing around in my mind. That indeed, all of this that we experience, or to make it more personally... All of this that I experience, staring into this camera, looking at myself in the viewfinder and on this screen, looking at the audio levels and the light and all this other stuff, there comes times where all of this feels so illusory and synthetic and almost as though I could grab reality like a sheet, and just pull it down so that I could see what lies beyond it. And those times are so much more pronounced when at 2, 3, or 4 o'clock in the morning, I find a particular piece of music that is so gripping and so in line with my own internal storm that it's almost like a dream sign. You know what I mean, obviously. You know, when you're when you're dreaming and something happens and you're like, hold on, this can't be real. This isn't right. If you believe reality is fractal, as I do, then when you see a dream sign, something happens that shouldn't happen, like your dog speaking to you or, you know, whatever, your car flying out of nowhere where it shouldn't. And you think to yourself, oh, this isn't right. This shouldn't be happening. You speak to a dead relative, specifically. You think, this can't be happening. And you snap out of that dream and you wake up into another dream. This reality feels like another dream. What, then, is there to stop you from trying to wake up from this dream? Like Inception. They were multiple levels deep in their minds. And in order to rise through the levels back to waking consciousness, they would kill themselves. That's obviously not what I'm suggesting to anyone who's trying to glean some knowledge out of this talk. I'm not intending to have anyone learn anything from this conversation right now. It's not a conversation. I'm talking at you. <laughs> You're listening. Uh, it's not a conversation. If anything, you could call this a very half-ass impromptu video diary entry. Uh, a vlog, I guess. The actual meaning of a vlog. A video diary. A log, a video. I'll stop. I'm not trying to teach anyone anything. My point in, in saying this is 
there has to be a way to wake up from this reality because there's a way to put down the controller and stop playing the game. Have you ever thought about the, you know, perhaps it's a, a strange thought, but have you ever thought about what the character in the video game must be thinking as they are being controlled by some being that they cannot perceive or even begin to understand that has complete control over their every action? You'd think, well, they don't think. They have no sentient thoughts. They're not a, you know, artificial intelligence created that can then process its own thoughts and ideas. Perhaps. But what if there are beings that are controlling our actions? Maybe it's not the same way with a controller plugged into a, a video game console. Maybe it is something more etheric, something more indelible keeps coming to mind, but something more, you know, transcendent, where it is in fact like they're playing with us. And we feel the effects of their marionette-like strings. We feel the, the tug and the pull on our lives daily, but like the video game character, we are bound by invisible cords code built into a matrix around us that we can't break out of. Namely because we can't see what there is to break out of. Every game has a glitch. And people experience those glitches all the time. In video games, they're everywhere. People go looking for glitches because they know that they can be found. Maybe these people are game developers themselves so they know what to look out for, like no clipping and you know things like that bugs and whatever reality i believe has the same such bugs and there are people that look for them i believe i'm someone who is adamantly searching uh what you would say in arabic as a talib uh, i'm a seeker i'm searching for these glitches in the matrix and you know the feeling when you found someone talking about something very interesting uh, like i said i spend time on reddit to give you a, a good example i came across uh, a tiktok page that was presenting posts from reddit about strange things and they were very interesting things and they were describing glitches, in a sense. What's the strangest thing that's happened to you? And, you know, some of those things are, are very strange. One of the things I read is um, someone, you know, being woken up by a family member and then finding that that family member wasn't actually alive at that time and that the family member actually died that night and they were being spoken to by that family member before they knew that they had died. Things interesting like that. Um, where there are very clearly glitches. Glitches where people relive a day. I remember a specific story because it's come to mind. I think I should share it. Uh, there was a, a poster on Reddit. I don't remember his name, but he said one day uh, during high school, he skipped class with one of his friends. It was like a school lecture or something. And he skipped. And the result of that was, you know, he went across the street, there was a convenience store on the other side, and a red truck came and hit him and killed him. And he remembers being hit, laying on the ground, the pain, and then nothing. And then he remembers waking up in his bed. And he was like, this is very strange. He went about his day normally. Everything happened the same way it did the first time. And this time, when... He and his friend left the, you know, auditorium meeting, you know, and they were crossing the street to get to the convenience store to get snacks. He said, wait, I'm, I don't, I don't want to die today. And so he, he waited and the same truck passed that would have hit him and killed him. And so interesting things like that happen, just like, you know, the black cat in the matrix symbolizing deja vu. 
things like this happen and it seems on a daily basis that they happen to people and it only suggests that we are in fact living in some sort of false reality some sort of dream persistent though it may be it is a dream how would someone prove to you in a dream that you were in fact dreaming how do you wake people up in a dream you do something that proves to them that this reality does not make sense that's what we experience that feeling you get where your body begins to tremble as you hear certain stories and you feel that energy moving through you and you're just like this is it i don't know what it is but i need to learn more about this it's not the story in itself it's the the truth in that story nobody cares about a story well I mean, of course you do it's an interesting story but like at the end of the day the story doesn't go anywhere it's a pond there is no fresh water flowing in or out of it that's the end of the story this guy had this strange experience and that's it you know uh this guy passed through a wall and that's it he opened a door and you know he went into some room and that room turned out to be uh someone else's house he teleported there. these stories end in themselves because the person that experiences them knows not what they are but the story is a vehicle to express the truth that this isn't real as i sit here in front of this camera watching that viewfinder that viewfinder this light I know unequivocally that none of this is real and sometimes I know it so certainly that I expect like in a dream for beings to appear to silence me or to confuse me so that I return to sleep like agents I spend a lot of time focusing on dreams when I was uh, early on in my spiritual development, I'll say. I spent a lot of time on dreams because I was searching for the power of the subconscious mind. I thought hypnosis would do it, and I wasn't skilled enough at hypnosis. I didn't know enough yet. I was maybe 16 or 17. Uh, not to say that 16 or 17-year-olds can't know, or not, know a lot. I mean, that's silly to, to assume, but I didn't, so stop it. <laughs> I didn't know a lot. Um, so I went to dreams. Movies like Inception gave me the impression that I could interact with my subconscious mind were I only to know that I was dreaming at the time. And I experienced several times where once lucid and aware that I was in the dream space, some construction of my subconscious mind occupying astral space that... I was I was now dreaming and upon that realization something would manifest itself being totally honest with you it wasn't like people in suits like the matrix that would be far too symbolically you know rigid and typical it was darkness it's the it was like this encroaching abyss pulling in from the corners of my mind i'd become lucid and this field of darkness would come after me uh, sometimes that field would be personified as a being of shadow standing off in corners standing in in you know areas that i would look in once i became lucid the first time it happened i became lucid and i was at my friend's house and i looked down the hall and there was this shadowy figure staring at me it wasn't moving but it was there, and its presence conveyed stop. Its presence gave me a, you shouldn't be doing this. And that's what I mean. I get to a place in this reality where I feel like that same thing is happening. It's much more clever. It seems like the further down, fractally, into reality you go the easier the simulation is see the simulation must take parts it must 
like any great simulation made by someone who's a chess master, they would create simulation upon simulation like stacked chess boards. It has to be that way. No video game only has one level, it has multiple stages. This is all in fact a game of some kind. And the dream is another type of simulation. And because this simulation is built so masterfully, we have to dip into a lower level of that simulation every time we sleep in order to reestablish the idea that this is, in fact, the only reality because we fall into a different one that doesn't seem as stable. Think about this for a second. Have you ever played a game where, in that game, it's very immersive, the environment is very real, and it pulls you in, it's very fun, It's maybe it's a horror game, and like I just recently watched. And there are parts in the game, many games in the game, where it is not as detailed. You can't do as much. It's not as deftly made as the full game is. It's a mini game. But in that, it does something to you subconsciously. It, in effect, fortifies and solidifies the full game by showing you a version of the game that is far less intricate. All the while, as you play this mini-game, you'll be thinking about getting back to the real game. And that moment of, let me get back to the real game that isn't actually the real game, pulls you a step further out of what actually is. And that is what keeps you in this simulation. My point being, why I mentioned all of this, is that I feel that way about this reality. Like I said, looking at the camera, the viewfinder, viewfinder, and light. Feeling the fabric of reality, speaking into this mic. What is all of this for? Who am I talking to? It is possible that, in fact, no one actually exists. Maybe no one ever has existed. Maybe no one ever will exist. And then I get this thought that trails into my mind almost like someone on a boat slowly moving downstream. This thought sneaks into my mind silently gliding on the waters of my inner dialogue. And it's just like, maybe this is a dream. In the movie Inception, DiCaprio's character speaking to the aspiring dream architect, says to her to prove that they're in a dream because she has no idea, looks real, she's going through things normally. He says, okay, you know, we're in a dream right now. And she's like, what? And he says, yeah, you know, how did we get here? Do you remember? Where are we right now? You see, the moment you begin to trace back your whereabouts, your happenings, even now, do it now. Take a moment and think about what you were doing just a few minutes ago. Now think about a few minutes before that. How did you get where you are right now? Doesn't that do something strange to your mind? It does to mine. I could be crazy, of course, but, you know, it doesn't make any difference to you. When you think back to where you previously were, how you got to this place, and what this place is, it should do something to your mind. Right? To me, I begin to experience two realities at once. The reality of me, several minutes ago, laying in bed, listening to music, and thinking to myself, I have to start making videos when I get the inspiration to, because the energy is there. And then I'm experiencing the reality of me here now. Why is that pertinent? What, uh, 
What is important about that? As I've said before, if your mind can move beyond the physical body, that means that the vessel that you occupy on a daily basis doesn't need to be the only place you reside consistently. It happens somewhere over here. I know pointing to a physical location to describe something mentally observed is foolish, but it feels like it's happening right here. When I, when I envision something, it's like it's here somehow. Like if I had VR like glasses on, it would be like, I'd be looking and it'd be like right here in my vision. I don't know why that's important. But I feel like there's a way to, to wake up from this matrix. And some of you may be thinking, well, of course, Cal, that's what enlightenment is. That's why we go on this spiritual journey to wake ourselves up from all of that. But what if, what if all of that is just another part of the game itself? Now, I know there are a few of you, and I'm friends with, with quite, quite a few of you, that would tell me, oh, there is no Cal. Rightfully so, I know what you mean. There isn't. Cal doesn't exist. Just like whoever you're playing in a dream doesn't exist when you wake up. Have you ever had a dream where you're a different person during the dream? I have. Many times. I've had dreams where I've died in the dream and I wake up in this life. only to go back and dream again and be someone different. Perhaps that is a, a, fractal, uh, a fractal representation of reincarnation and how it would work here. I don't know. It's perplexing. That's the most I can say about it. It's very perplexing. I hope to be able to solidify some sort of etheric knowledge that would help anyone if there actually are any other beings here. And that's just the thing. Apart from this discovery I made that music seems to be a bridge to other people, like, you know, to proof that other people actually exist because how could they make that music? Someone told me once that you can't defeat a system from within that system. You have to get outside of it. Because while you're inside of it, you are subject to its rules. Neo couldn't control the Matrix until he got out of the Matrix and saw that it was in fact not real. Your first playthrough of the game, you're not looking for cheats and... You know, you experience the game normally. The fear comes across my mind from time to time that because I'm aware that this is a dream, that that darkness that I told you about will begin to encroach upon me from the corners and crevices of my mind as it did in those dreams. Because this is, in fact, another type of dream. I don't want to make anyone worry, because I've got many different people that watch these videos, some people that know me personally, so I don't want anyone to come to me questioning my <laughs> mental stability. It has never been stable, and it will not be stable now or in the future. I prefer it that way. You know, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is only an important building because it's leaning and hasn't fallen yet, so... I'll continue to teeter because it's uh, it's more appealing to, to watch. Uh, strange world we live in, indeed. One other thing I've come across is that time is, or waiting in particular, is very much like running a marathon, only... You don't know where the finish line is or that there is even a finish line. Incredibly difficult to persist, one would imagine. And so you have to create these fake finish lines. A running tactic that I employ that I read somewhere was when you're running, 
when you start to get tired and you think you can't go any further, set little milestone goals. And when you accomplish them, maybe you'll get a little bit of dopamine that'll help you to continue running. You say to yourself, I'm just going to run to that light post right down the street. And do you make it there? And then you set another goal. I'm just going to run there. I'm just going to run there. And you keep the finish line or the checkpoint very close to where you currently are. Because it's easier to run a mile when the finish line is closer. Could you imagine how difficult it would be to persist in anything if the finish line were unseeable? As I said at the onset of this video, I just needed to share thoughts with you. Forgive me in the past if I've taken on the position of teaching you all anything. I'm not a teacher. I guess I could be presented as a teacher, but Cal, the teacher, is not the same person that I believe this awareness to be. There's a net of consciousness and the nexus points, the nadis of that net, where they meet and connect, are these human bodies that we have. We're all connected. But if you were looking at a net, at the point where, you know, the net meets, you know, if the net was like connecting in certain spots, the point where the net meets. If you were looking at that point where it spreads out, you'd think it was separating into different things, but it's just connecting to another grid, I guess you could say. A grid. At this point, I'm just rambling, but I did tell you that I was tossing around different prattlings going on in my mind, so... You guys were in for a treat if you liked listening to my random babbles of, you know, psycho nonsense. They're called psycho babbles, I guess. I think that's going to do it for this video. I have more to say and more to express. But for the sake of keeping these videos categorically... Hmm pertinent or, you know, understandable, I will try to reel in my thoughts, but I hope one day to describe it in detail to where it helps someone connect to what I feel in those moments. I started this talk off mentioning solipsism. It's not something that I believe in completely, because I've experienced moments with other people that make sense, but if you trace this New Age sort of belief system down to its core, it's really just the idea of oneness. It's really just the core beliefs behind Hinduism, you know, and some other Eastern practices, I'm sure. It's, it's this idea that we are all in fact one and that there is only oneness and that there is no separation, just the appearance of separation. One thing appearing as two, as I've said before. That would suggest that there is only you. To the person watching this, Cal doesn't exist. It's very much possible that Cal represents Morpheus to some of you. And how Morpheus' only job was to find Neo, or in this case, you. And so I am just a secondary character in the story of your life. It is indeed possible that I don't even exist, and you would never know it. You would continue to sleep living out your days in this cleverly crafted dream world. It's so difficult to 
put into words the feeling of knowing so strongly that you are dreaming and that there is another world that encapsulates this one in the same way this world encapsulates a dream world. And how far does it go? One would fear that it goes on infinitely. But doesn't that seem like a trap? Doesn't it seem like a, a prison of some kind? There was a movie called The Hypercube. It's an old movie now, early 2000s maybe. Oh, one I'm seeing in my mind, but I'm not sure. Um, it was about these, well, it's, it's just, it starts with people in a cube. They're just in like a box. It looks like a big lit up box. It's, it's a huge room, basically. It just looks like a, a room, a big room. Uh, you know, it's hard to describe, but there are vent, video game vent size openings four ways like on every wall there's a way for them to like climb up to something and crawl into another room that looks exactly the same as the one before it but the environment will be slightly different and the idea was that they were moving through a fourth dimensional cube and experiencing different realities or different universes and, and diff you know in these cube spaces which is very interesting and that's kind of what reality feels like Because it could very well go on forever. And that begs the question of what's the point? I know that there are a lot of you who like listening to these talks that I have. Um, and this definitely encourages me to make them it's obviously not for any monetary gain on youtube like youtube makes no money at all honestly um, i make them purely because i know that there is someone who's going to hear it and it is going to be if not valuable it's going to feel the same way that it felt for me reading those reddit posts like this is interesting there is some measure of truth in what this person is saying you can feel it when you listen when someone tells you a story and it's amazingly unique and weird and you're like how did that happen the story in itself is just a vehicle you're finding the truth embedded in the story and the truth is that this isn't real just like a dream I am currently your dream sign I wonder what would happen if one were to stop playing their role in the game. It seems to me that that's the only way to sever the cords of the marionette. You just stop playing. I don't mean ending the game from your end, I mean not following the beaten path of the story mode of the game. Not following your cosmic role. Just not participating in the play anymore. A few things could happen. I, nothing is a very real possibility. As you do nothing, nothing happens. Which is not usually the case. Like, things happen regardless of what you do. But another thing that could happen is that conductors will come and find you just like in these dreams that i described especially with magic especially now that i found magic now that i've discovered magic i feel like i've gone mad but i'm so certain it's real i've seen it in action but i'm the only one who has seen it the way that I've seen it through my eyes. None of you all have the certainty that I have about magic. No one does. 
except for the people that do it, the people that have seen it firsthand. My belief in it is 95 to 99%. I've seen it so clearly. I see its effects almost daily. And it makes me think, if the ability to move objects with one's mind is real, to control flame, or to perceive people's thoughts, or any number of video game glitch-esque things are possible, then there must be other people out there tasked with the job of fixing those glitches like a patch in a video game. The developer sees that someone is glitching the system and they go and they write a new line of code that corrects it. It makes it impossible. In this version of reality, that doesn't seem so. It doesn't seem like they rewrite the code. <clears throat> it seems more like we're a virus that spawned from the system itself, a corruption. And corruptions just need to be deleted, completely removed from the system altogether. And that's what I fear is, is bound to happen. In the movie Jumper, the main character was having a great time. He was teleporting here and there, wherever he wanted to go. All he had to do was see an image of the place to to teleport there stably, only an image once. He just had to have it in his mind and he could go there. And he went everywhere. And eventually it caught up with him and this organization almost, this secret society, came after him. There is no way that if magic is real, that there is not some organization out there seeking to delete the corruption in the system. There has to be. Otherwise, this system was made to break. And no house made to break is ever going to stand any sort of testing. So this simulation had to have been made with the idea in mind that people were going to figure out how to circumvent its rules and regulations. There have to be measures in place to prevent people from doing whatever they want. And magic is, indeed, whatever you want. <laughs> it's, it's the ultimate whatever you want that kind of makes life quite game-like. You can do whatever you want. I'll be talking about that in subsequent videos in more detail. I think that's it. I think I've given you all enough rambling of my mind for this present moment. I don't want to come up with a schedule for when I'll upload videos. Because the moment I come up with a schedule, it seems as though forces will conspire to prevent me from upholding that. I don't know why that is. Making a New Year's resolution, for instance. Presenting it is almost like you're inviting challenge. Don't position it like that. Try to position things in your life in such a way that the universe doesn't have to balance the equation because it always will. If you make a grand expression of your desire to do something, then there has to be an equal and powerful opposition in like measure to what you've put forth. It has to be. This is balance. Well, I mean, scientifically, there's always an equal reaction. Thermodynamics says that energy can't be created or destroyed. More accurately, that the energy in a system is the only energy in that system. And you can't add more energy to that system and expect it to, to act any differently. I may have botched that, but that's technically what they're trying to say.
is that you can't get more out of an energy system than what is in it without putting more into it. Whatever. An interesting game we're playing, at least I'll say that. <laughs> I'll say that indeed. Uh, message me in the comment section. That's that's the end of this video. I'm, I'm done. I'm done messing around with you guys. Uh, you know, comments, questions, whatever, in the comment section. You can like the video if you want. It doesn't make any difference. It lets me know that people liked it, at least. Algorithmically, it makes no difference. Um, more videos like this will be coming in the future. I go through periods where this channel needs to change and adapt because it is quite organic. And it seems like I'm going to be making more videos like this that aren't specifically me chalk to chalkboard explaining something to you. It's just going to be me spilling my thoughts from what I've researched and how I'm feeling at the moment. That's it. If you guys want a one-on-one -on -one with me to talk and share your ideas or get some spiritual advice from me, magic done for you, psychic reading, whatever, you know where to reach me. It's going to be in the description of this video. Um, and that's going to do it for this one. Again, that's like three times I've said that already. <laughs> but as always, I love you guys. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for watching. Uh, blessings, love and light, namaste, and as always, never stop adventuring.